character and like watching Mr. E just be one of the best Marts out there. I actually always enjoyed watching Mart as a character on the screen from Brawl to Melee. I'm sorry, from Melee to Brawl to Smash 4 to even Ultimate at times. Like I don't I don't like the way Marth is in this game, and that's why we kind of see Mr. E on the Lucina, but I always do enjoy watching some of his matches. Um, his ability and understanding of the character altogether is one of my favorites. Yeah, and also one thing that's really cool about um, watching is uh, seeing Mark. Like you don't see them much, like much in a uh, ultimate. But uh, if the player knows how to use Tipper, it can be very. Oh, that spike coming out with the downer though. <laughs> there is uh, no finish. Tipper required, unfortunately, on that downer. That's the beautiful thing about Lucina, my dear. The, uh, yeah. No pun intended with your name, uh, Lucina's sword is just mightier all around. And even towards the end of Smash 4, the one thing we did see from Mr. E start to slowly do was utilize Lucina as a character. And then in Ultimate, it just turned out, yeah, Lucina is the much better choice compared to Mark. Just because, you know, if, if Krom is as good as Krom is with all his strength and the sword, Lucina is definitely the better choice between her and Mark. Mark is, I feel like, the more niche of a character. But Lucina definitely rewards you just having all that knockback and not really have to worry about spacing. Oh no! Oh, that directional air dodge is gonna be very unfortunate for Mr. E right there. But like, like you were saying about Marth and Lucina. Now, I wouldn't necessarily say that Lucina is the better version. Uh, I think it depends on the player. Cause if you want a more reliable, more damage kind of character, then go with Lucina. Yeah. But like, if you're more accurate with your Tipper, then go with Marth. Uh, some there's some things that Marth can do um, with the like weak spot of the sword that can allow you to do like follow-ups into like possible smash attacks and stuff. Yeah, which is stuff that Lucina can't do. The crazy thing in Ultimate is uh, in Ultimate a lot of moves were buffed uh, to the point that I tell people like it, it sounds funny, but buttons feel better in this game. That's why people say like oh a lot of characters smash in Ultimate as compared to four. Um, it's just character buttons all around work better. So Lucina's buttons are just that good. And that makes her infinitely better than Marth. I do understand like Marth, Marth's combo abilities are very, very niche, but once you land them, like, yeah, you can't expect to do big damage. But in hindsight, in the meta, Lucina definitely is the strongest pick between the two. Uh, but the one thing here we're seeing Mighty Man is Mr. E is doing a really solid job of just trying to avoid as much as possible to come out from PK Chris. Oh, that's a good back end. But the one thing we also need to know here that we've been seeing as well is Mr. E angles the shield. And I've talked about this so many times. Broken record at this point, by the way. Like, your ability to shift your hurtbox on the shield is really smart. Rough committal there with the neutral air, but I respect it from Mr. E because he kind of wanted to, like, angle it backwards a little bit to avoid getting hit by the grab. Another thing about Martha and Lucina is, like, since they're... Their moves are like so. Their moves are like so wide. It's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. Um, on how much range they have, number one. But number two, they're not that hard to learn, but they can be difficult to like master. Yeah, they definitely reward. Uh, I would definitely. Yeah, I would say the skill ceiling is up there. One thing for a lot of players is to really have a really good, strong understanding of movement and neutral. Those two things all together are very strong. But also, Mr. E super keen on angling that shield. Like I said, he is avoiding all getting shield poked by all those aerials from this. Anything that PK Chris has tried here is just not seeming to pull through. Double fair here, almost with third one, and Mr. E will swipe right because he did not like that fair train all the way through. Mr. E is on the edge guard here. This is pretty much where Lucina is able to accelerate. On that we saw that spike we see this forward tilt and mr e takes game on with an incredible read on that recovery and that was good too because he was looking to just see all right cool i'm gonna go for these empty hops if you go for the slow recovery remember that time i spiked you i'll do it again if you don't go for the slow recovery which unfortunately pika chris did not uh i will get you with another move i can get you with forward smash forward tilt you name the way you want to die basically pick your poison yeah i see all right, uh, let's see. Oh, was just sent me text. Okay, uh, Vance, what was your favorite match from the Invitational? Oh, right, right, this past weekend's Invitational. Um, <laughs> what was my favorite match? If you don't say mine, that's fine. I mean, I, I don't really care. I just, I, I, I honestly, <laughs> I feel like, so bad. now you're making me feel bad. Oh. No, no, no. I promise I won't, I won't like get butt hurt over it. Just trust me. Like, I, I honestly want to know what is your favorite one? Like, what was the most hype you could say? Mm. 
interesting bias, but I always enjoy watching catch up play. Uh, I, I've like why I've always enjoyed. Yeah, I've always enjoyed watching catch up play, win or lose. I love it when he when catch up is winning, uh, just because all the things I see him do in advantage is insane, and all the little intricate things he's come up with as Bowser Jr. main. But definitely catch up. All, most of Ketchup's matches on stream are like some of my favorites. I, I've always enjoyed watching Ketchup at WNF. Kind of like half the reason why I like going is seeing players like T3 and Ketchup uh, at WNF. Uh, which, unfortunately, if you guys are watching this bond, why am I mentioning WNF? Um, Esports Arena is moving its location, so we don't know when WNF will be happening, but it's okay. We have MSM Online, and Mr. E is really here to satisfy all your MSM Online needs because he gets this edge guard right here. With the counter, doesn't even need the hit. PK Kills will unfortunately not meet the height requirement there. Now that uh, Mr. E did that uh, beautiful uh, counter to get uh, PK Chris is uh, stock using the sword dance, not falling, uh, going through all the way. Uh, nice grab to forward throw, missing that side smash though. Yeah. Getting hit with the PK fire to back air. Combo I've never seen before from Ness, but at the same time, I don't see that many Nesses either. That's good. Mr. E shows his back to PK Chris, and it's kind of rough there because you have to watch out if you're going to get grabbed or any opportunity. But the reason why is you can go for back or you can go for up or you can go for a tilt. It all depends on how PK Chris wants to move from the latch. That's one thing Mr. E is really smart about. You have to visualize a lot of sword characters and their and their hitboxes as a bubble. You have to see Lucina as a bubble. Every time she swings the sword, how close is that bubble to Ness, right? And that's how you kind of get your spacing down. Really good spot dodge, capitalizing off that Miss Tech and Mystery on the aggressive side here. Even if he does not get back on the stage, man, that up to stop PK Chris right in his tracks lets people know this is why the matchup has always been good for characters like Mark and Lucina. This, this is definitely one of those matchups that I tell people, like, if you're... If you have a really strong understanding of how to play Martha and Lucina, this matchup will not be that difficult. It'll be pretty simple because Ness definitely loses to Swords, but Mr. E just has impeccable spacing, impeccable understanding of how the characters work. He angles his shields even on the PK fire because he knows, I do not want to get hit by anything from this Ness. Yeah, I mean, definitely. If you get hit by PK fire, Ness can definitely follow... Um follow it up with anything unless you're able to SDI very well but good use of the back air to catch Mr. E right there Ooh, and also uh, using the normal get up shield yeah look at the spacing okay. here it misses that forwarder even though there's a parry on that one Mr. E still has that stage control and that's what he looks to find looks for that spacing retreats back still holds that center stage and that's really pro that's really really smart spaces out that forward smash to avoid Ness's up smash which is really clean. This is what I'm talking about. You need to imagine that bubble. And Mr. E brings that bubble at a, always at a safe distance against his nest. And at this point, look at the way PK Chris has to respect that approach towards center stage. Forward tilt here coming out from Mr. E. Looking out for the edge guard. PK Chris has to find something. I do like that PK Thunder. Dash attack finally breaking through here for PK Chris. I was smashed to try to get this anti here. Uh, Mighty Man, PK Chris finally gets his back throw. What is this going to be the next best play for him? I mean, honestly, uh, I would say to stay, uh, I guess you could say, since Ness has uh, projectiles, kind of stay away from Mr. E and then play that passive aggressive game that I sometimes talk about, or like possibly say if Mr. E is going to commit to something, he, uh, he could possibly do like a whiff punish would mm -hmm. be uh, very good and uh, possibly using grabs to gain stage control. Yeah, but I like I like what Cheap Neep says here. Mystery is taunting this nest. This man is not taunting. This man is a lion. He has a lion on a rock, <laughs> and this nest is just trying to get on that rock. But you know when you see the lion just roar and he's not moving from that rock, that's Mystery. He says if you want to get on this rock, bro, you don't have to come through me. And it's not gonna be that easy as you think. Uh, like I said, Mystery has a really good understanding of the neutral and. A lot of Lucina's tools, but unfortunately, when you're that far off the stage, that'll be good for PK Chris from that PK fire. And we talked about how that was the one thing Mr. E was looking to avoid every time he angled the shield as well. Things like PK fire right there. Yeah, and uh, PK Chris uh, bringing it back with the clutch for game two. And it looks like we're going to go to a game three for winner's quarters. Yeah. Uh, I will definitely say for sure, uh, PK Chris kind of stole that. Mr. E was off stage for like two seconds. <laughs> and the next thing you know, one PK fire, 
and one direction right on later, man. And PK Chris will definitely steal that. Moving up 1-1 so far. Uh, this is still best of three here, Mighty Man, in winner's quarters before we even get the top eight. Uh, both of these players, man, are super, super top four on the level. So these are two players I do want to see get to top four. But we'll see who's going to make it on winner's side and who's going to make it on losers. I mean, I'm actually pretty excited to see how this last match turns out. Uh, since PK Chris is able to bring it back with that epic comeback on a uh, game two, but yeah. uh, same characters. Uh, for a second, I thought I saw one of them change character. Yeah, uh, Mr. E definitely one of those players. Like, I don't see him going any other character. I don't even think I'll ever see him go Marth. But you know, Mr. E, you guys can probably watch Mr. E on his streams, and he'll explain you know things of like, okay, this is why I will go Marth. This is why I don't go Marth. Uh, for him with Lucina, honestly, he could definitely just rub off what happened that last game and still come back. Because, oh no, Mr. E a little bit too low on the recovery. He's going to be fine waiting out for the common PK fire option. If you don't see Ness jump and you see him do for PK fire, you know what you can, what you can activate on that next. Going to roll away from that one, looking for center stage. Right, using the roll get up. Oh, they, uh, I guess... I don't know what that th canceled out of each other. Getting back to stage. Oh man, getting a uh, two frame by the by the down tilt. Good use of the extra jump to uh, the uh, air dodge to get back to stage. Yeah, and this is, uh, second jump is actually extremely high. Like you cannot underestimate it. Sometimes he doesn't even need PK Thunder. Yeah. For game over GG here, and the thing is, Mr. E knows I don't really have to go for the edge guard all the time. The real the real property here is to hold the stage because eventually Ness will have to fold one of the cards to fall into either up tilt, forward tilt, down tilt, you name it. There's a lot of things Ness can fall into if I just hold the stage properly. Uh, for Ness though, and PK Chris on this one, getting that back throw and that pump was gonna be really big on the stock lead here so far. But you can tell Mr. E aims to kind of stall each aerial, but also look for the spacing in that one. Dash attack to punish down the cross up here and Mr. E once again looking to hold the stage because he knows center stage is important. Shows off the back. We talked about that, Mighty Man. He gets he can either get a back air, up air. It's all about the reaction Mr. E can get here. Uh, nice dash attack to uh, catch Mr. E. Ooh, getting hit by that back air, I believe is what it was, and using the um, the bubble to slow his or the magnet to slow his fall. Getting hit by that two frame, using PK Thunder once again, and getting back to stage using magnet to protect himself. But it didn't look like it worked. Yeah. But Right Mr. now, Mr. E is sitting at a uh, 16%, and let's see how this, uh, how PK Chris takes this next stop. Yeah, and I do like how Game Over says it's not threatening at all, but you can tell the threat there coming up from Mr. E immediately as soon as he is able to get that down tilt going. Uh, setting up for the two frame is really good for Lucina because your opponent has to re grab the ledge. You can hit that downer, and then that'll be curtains on Ness's recovery. But we'll see PK Chris able to avoid the PK fire, which is really scary because when you're trying to recover, we saw how that happened last time. PK Chris was able to rob him there. Oh, nice use of the neutral airs to space. Oh, and the backer coming out to catch his jump get up. Another backer. Wow, Mr. E is struggling against this nest. And I'm actually surprised he made it back. Wow. Yeah, forward tilt. That was good too because he directional air dodge early to move himself as early as possible. And there's a few frames after directional air dodge where you cannot move. So Mr. E gets rid of those frames as soon as possible and can go for an even deeper recovery. Still saving that jump and going for that early up beat. He, he kind of understands how PK Chris is kind of moving with Ness essentially to still be able to make that rec those recoveries. But Mr. E, all, once again, on the impeccable spacing here, able to avoid the PK fire and he's just threatening him with each aerial. At this point, PK Chris has to respect each aerial as well. Every time Mr. E is in the air, you know there's going to be something out there and PK Chris avoids it so far. Back air on the roll, E and Mr. E for the deep edge guard of B, the tech coming up from PK Chris. Man, he does not want to go down second PK Thunder attempt here. Mr. E just has to hold this impeccably as he has so far. Guess his forward tilt. Marty, man, this is going to go probably down to the wire because these two are still on their second song. Oh, man. Oh, getting launched really high in the air. Good DI, though. The back air coming out. Uh, that was a rising back air out of shield, which is very good. Oh, getting hit by the up tilt. Not going to die yet. Using the magnet to slow his fall. Using uh, the neutral B. Getting back to stage with PK Thunder. Hanging, stalling on ledge. Using magnet to cross up... Uh, Mr. E and Mr. E was expecting him to not air dodge, using the air dodge to get back to stage, hanging on to ledge, using PK fire, and then PK thunder, getting hit by the nair. You gotta be careful here. 
do you th he's also using that uh, neutral B to stall his uh, landing or yeah. his fall. But right now, you can see that PK Chris is definitely hanging in there at 189%. This is the highest I've ever seen a Ness go. Yeah, and down tilt there. He has to try to read up the ledge. Okay, that's good. I'll throw a kill at that percent normally just because that's one thing that it's got to give. Uh, but for Lucina, she has rage. I'll throw a kill for kill as well for Marth. But that kill throw isn't even a real kill throw to be quite honest. Right, nice grab to the fourth throw. PK Thunder coming out. Yeah, you gotta that, PK Thunder so fast. It's kind of it's kind of ridiculous. Oh, getting hit by that dash attack though. Right now, PK Chris is kind of spacing a little bit, as you can see. We went for a little committal back here there, which uh, got punished. Yeah, Mr. E still continues that spacing. Watch out for the PK fire. Gets away. You know, Mystery has to constantly fight for center stage at this point at 120. It's going to be a back throw away or a back air. And, you know, Mystery does not want to get hit neutral air to call out this forward neutral air. Neutral air. And Pika Kess will take it over. Mystery E 2-1 at the very end.